Dumbass movement that I'm creating, you feel me? Um, right now, man, I'm just here, honored by the Most High, just to be uh, in the presence of one of the youngs that I grew up with, man. It's such a blessing, and um, talk politics, talk business. Uh, you know, it's something that I, I, I definitely look forward to doing with uh, with him and some of his compadres in the future. All right, so. This dumbass movement. That's, what is the basis behind this, and what is your goal in uh, in your whole movement? What what is what are you trying to do? Okay, well, the dumbass movement is something that I created on Instagram that speaks to the generation that is. Look, it's not necessarily that the generation under me. I'm 33, so the generation under me is dumb. No, that's not the the, the fact. The, the it's actually the opposite. You know what I mean? They are so smart that. Uh, they're not using common sense, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, we, we, me, I say dumb, dumbass movement, basically, they're, they're not allowing themselves to remember the, the old ways of things, you know, how we sometimes don't use our brains when it comes to a uh, certain memory focus, so it's like we forget, like we, I, I don't know how many numbers I did forgot just because of storing them in my phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, I'm just saying we becoming dumber just because technology is so we're, is making. Yeah. We're relying on technology to think for us. Therefore, we're we're smarter, but we're not using our brain nowhere near as much. Absolutely, as we used to. absolutely. So your plan is to to get people to think again. Think again, man. Think right. more. You feel me? Think. Be be. Be independent, independent minded, you know what I mean? Be aware of yourself, be, be aware of your own thoughts. You know, emotions do matter. Be aware of your emotions. Right now, it's a time of emasculation of soul, so don't, don't be no puppet, you know what I mean? Don't be a puppet. See, my whole reasoning behind starting this whole show, the way I did it is because as black people and as black young entrepreneurs, we politic all the time and we deal in politics and politics affect us whether we know it or not. So just conversations of sharing your point of view and, and getting your understanding of the way that you see things helps the world. So by everybody sharing their voice, you are participating in politics. So I wanted to put a platform for people that's not necessarily viewed as politicians but to spew their political views and, and to give the, the people their mind state and, and what they think about the current state of what's going on. Absolutely, and I believe that you are doing that and you're doing it in a degree where it is is beautiful, man. It's definitely a beautiful. You showed me the outline, outline of, the, uh, of the perimeter and everything that you got going on. It's definitely a beginning, and, and I, man, I just have great... I have great aspirations to just see what this is going to become. You know, um, again, we are all entitled to our opinions, you know, and when you say that we are viewed as politicians, we are viewed as politicians. We also viewed as 
uh, philosophers as well, you know what I mean? We all have a story, we all come from different demographics, so I mean, that can in, in, in the, enlighten other people, especially the youth that uh, are being discouraged by, uh, by just what's going on, Pu uh, simple politics, econo uh, economics, you know, that's not, not uh, for us, you know what I mean, in our communities, black and brown, you know what I mean? Um, so it's certain agendas that's affecting our communities that uh, we definitely need to speak on, you know, and if we're not aware of this thing, if we don't have that platform, then that message will not be heard, and you are definitely doing that, Caleb, and I give you, you know, the fist, bruh, because, you know what I mean, it, it takes, it takes a, a certain focus to get to this level, and you've definitely done that. So, uh, congratulations with that, man. Thank you, bro, I appreciate it. So, did you see Dante Wilder's comments and his commentary uh, leading up to this fight? So, what, what was your thoughts on him, his exchange with the uh, reporter, that said, your people, what do you mean by your people's been suffering? Like oh. he wasn't black, like he didn't experience Like he wasn't aware or yeah. conscious of it. He was and constantly, kind of, yeah. yeah, I think, uh, well, again, you know, in the media, mainstream media, you tend to be uh, in a position to either encourage your, you, you, you know, your community or discourage your community. And in this reporter's sense, I think he was just being senile, you know what I mean? He was, I don't think he meant to provoke the brother, but, you know, drama plays a part in it all as well, you know, just to amp up the fight. However, if he did uh, fiend that type of ignorance, then I think Deontay's, uh, Mr. Wilder's message to him was, man, race baiting. That's what, that's all that was. You know, a lot of people throw hooks out there just to get a reaction out of us because we are emotional people you know our people are a very deep emotional uh crowd of people and we tend to react instead of really thinking about uh certain questions but in uh in wilder's defense i believe the brother was he was straight on man you know what i mean his message was very precise and clear and um you know that's that's big ups to him you know it's what's going on what he meant by fighting 400 years and still fighting to this day is basically just just basic human rights you know what i mean uh civil civil liberties that that uh we have fought for over 400 years you know what i mean and um we still have not obtained those those civil liberties you know what i mean and you know for this country to be uh built on slave labor is 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 kind of is is disrespectful how a uh, certain crowd of or cer certain crowds of people treat us and how we are portrayed in the media and how we are portrayed in in uh and just in history and 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 just our culture you know it it's it's not it's not right you know and i think that's that's what what Wilder was tapping into you know mm -hmm. and you know with the recent police killings of the black men so it's a whole lot of that political stuff going on, so it's important that, you know, we pay attention and, and just be aware of these things and not really uh, focus on the problem. We all know the problem, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's been a, a community problem. It's, it's, it's us against us, and as long as we're against us, nobody else is going to be for us. So, you know, Wilder, uh, he, he, cleared, he uh, clarified himself when he, um, when he gave another report. Uh, uh, report about um, you know we see a brother and 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 we mean mug each other. We don't never embrace each other. We are a family. You know what I mean. And we've come a long way, and we still mean mug each other and and be quick to 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 fight each other and kill each other. But when it comes to other cultures, you know we we tend to turn the turn the cheek. You know what I mean. So yeah, yeah he 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 let us. You know he let it in, and I and I appreciate that brother emotion for that. All right, so let the people know a little background, like, where are you from? How okay, you well, from? I'm originally from Pasadena, whoop, whoop, you know, uh, Pasadena, California, you know, um, grew up, born and raised, and, uh, you know, graduated high school, you know, uh, did what I had to do, but I was incarcerated at 18, you know what I mean? I did 10 years in the pen, uh, four, I, I did the, the, full, the full yard, the 180s. 
you know what I mean? I I did no no lower than the three. I've never been to camp, you know. Um, so I've I've been through the 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 local politics, which is the county jails, and and um, and then I've also been through the the, the more serious uh, politics, which is up on the four yard, one eighty high desert, uh, Delano. Um, so I've touched different places and touched different people with my presence. Met met some beautiful people in, while I was incarcerated. Met you know um, heads of of, of of gangs that that people probably forgot of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm talking about, so I mean, I've met some people who started some of these gangs, and and I'm not talking about just white gangs or Mexican gangs, but also Crip and Blood gangs as well, you know. So um, yeah, man, I've I've been out, I've discharged parole, um, and and since then I've just been doing my little entrepreneur thing, you know, just trying to keep a positive focus, you know, um, I know now better um, uh, of myself of what it is, my role in as a black man in America, you know, I wasn't conscious to this, so I was misled by a whole lot of aliens, I call them aliens because they really had no idea of who they were as black men, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just, just, I'm starting to create now, I'm starting to be productive now and I'm starting to love more instead of hate because I have a, a better understanding of myself, you know, and, and, and my role in society. I feel yeah. that. So one thing that I found through my, like, I got caught with a gun at 17. I got tried as an adult at 17. Took a five-year probation. I violated five times within that five-year probation. Ended up doing going to jail six times for one charge. So I know how the system can derail you just off of something that I did at 17 years old, right. just as a black man with no res representation, just trying to find a way out of the situations that I was in. Right. And, and I understand, like, you can come out on the other side as long as you learn from your own mistakes and your own... You have to look yourself in the mirror and take onus for what you was doing and see what you don't like about yourself and decide to make the change to become who you want to be. And that's what led me to be in this seat right now and let, led us to have this conversation. Because we both decided that who we used to be and who we're going to be for the rest of our lives. Absolutely, I agree. My first charge was a robbery and uh, considered a carjacking and kidnapping, of which was uh, not serious as all, at all, but because of... The situation and circumstances of the case, I was only given two years, and um, I got out after two years in the county jail, and I stayed out probably 14 days, two weeks, bro. I stayed out 14 days before I, I hit a lick with, with a homie from the hood and got six years. Dude ratted on me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, we, we would have got away with it, but... That's when snitching was at its all-time high, and it was got whoever got down first. Man. You know, in my case, he got down first. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, after that, I did a five-year bid for something I didn't do. That was a uh, for a terrorist threat. You know, against my my wife's family, and that was completely trumped up charges. But because of my past, mm -hmm. um, exactly. You know, they they helped me so. So recidivism is what they call it. You know, it's it's basically when you get arrested and then and then they basically say that uh, the the yeah you have a pattern of violence or a right history, right or a right history right of reacting this way. So we're going based off your history right and not the facts of the case. right. And it's like how soon you'll end up back in prison before you you know what I mean. Yeah. But again, when you don't want to do something, when you don't, and let me tell you, I'm done with prison, I'm done with jails, you know what I mean? And when you're done with something, you, you, you can stop doing whatever it is you're doing to put you in that predicament. I understand you have to take chances, but there's, there's people, as long as you, you know how to utilize whatever community that you're in, bruh, I can't, I'm still coming from nothing as of we speak right now. I'm, I just, you know, I'm taking my God-given talents, you know what I mean, and utilizing them and doing what I have to do. There are no excuses. There are no excuses. I do not make excuses, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I could blame this man or that man, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's really me 
that's gonna have to deal with whatever it is. You See, know what I commend mean? you because a lot of people get out of this, out of jail, out of similar situations like you, and then they go straight into the white man system and then get discouraged when they can't get a a job right. in the white man's world. Right. So then they go back to the streets and they end up back in the in the in the trap, that, the in, trap. That they, you know what I'm saying? Right, that's right, why they call yeah. it trapping. Yeah, because yeah. you get so accustomed to living like this that you get trapped. Right. And you know what? That's why this platform is that much more important because it allows uh, those individuals to create. You know, a lot of the a lot of the brothers that's coming out of these prisons, they they write. You know what I mean? They 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 spend time in their writing music. They find a way to pass time by writing music. So when they come out. You know, if nobody have that opportunity, a lot of them draw as well, you know yeah. what I mean? So they utilize and, and, and really uh, sharpen up and hone in that skill, those skill sets, and they come out here and don't have that opportunity to really let them show. This platform is that much more important because of that, because you give them the opportunity to do that. And um, you know what? Again, it is, you know easy to get discouraged, especially with the agenda that's going on with the Trump administration doing what it's doing and these different laws being changed. You know, it is easy to get discouraged, but that's where your spiritual uh, sense should pop in. You know what I mean? I was born uh, in, in Christian church. However, while in prison, I found a Muslim faith. You know, I can't say I'm religious at all, but I do believe in God, the higher power of God being all living things. I preach this to my wife all the time. God is, in my opinion, all living things. All, everything breathing, living, is God. And when you're connected and understand that fact, then you understand that you are, in a sense, God. You know, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit. You have a war going on between spirit and flesh. You know, we are in this spiritual, this spiritual war, however... We are also in this physical presence. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we should not worry about the things that are to take place tomorrow, but just focus on what you have to take care of today in order to prepare for tomorrow. You know what I mean? Treat each other how you want to be treated. I, I mean, I can't say I've always been like that. It's a time where, you know, I would, I would have thought of taking this or taking that from the, oh, he, he balling. I need that. I'm hungry. You know what I mean? But I, it's no way and I can't see that because now I look at this person like he's God. You're God just as much as I'm, I am God. You know what I mean? So it's a matter of just understanding you, understanding yourself, utilizing your strengths, strengthening up your weaknesses, and just building, creating. And in that, you will produce and the, in the, in the universe will reciprocate that to you, will bring it right back to you. Like one thing that I... Like, I used to fly houses and do all that shit, and I had no problem with taking from other people. It wasn't until I started to actually work to attain the things that I have and have shit stolen from me that I know the feeling of struggling and actually going and getting something and then having it just taken away by somebody. So I never wanted to make somebody feel that way again. So stealing and taking from people is just... The scum of the earth to me because you don't know what people are going through or what people have to do to get that. And for right. you to just be hungry and just have the mindset that you're just gonna go take people's shit is just like the worst type of people in this world. Yeah, it could be seen as that way, you know. However, so much has been taken from us, you know, and in the in the well, matter of speaking from us. Yeah, and and, and, and that's, that's crazy. Problem. That's the problem. We you always know. take it. Why are you going to take from somebody who ain't that now? How come you don't go take from the rich? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it seemed like our state, our minds are so poisoned. You know what I mean? To to even think like that. I do understand what you're saying. Our minds have been con yeah. you know, conditioned, conditioned to, think, to that, think like, okay. Like, it's, like stealing somebody else's shit is cool. Right. Like, it, like it's nothing. Like who gives a fuck what they have to go through to get that? Right. You took it and it's yours now. Right. And that's our mentality is that, oh, they took from us so we could take from anybody we want. Right. And we got to change that whole mentality, that whole approach to shit. Right. I, I mean, I agree. You know, especially if you do have talents, you know, in, in some cases, you know, 
things may be taken from you, and in that sense, okay, take it back, what has been stolen from you, you know, because nothing is going to be given to you, if you, you know, that's not the, at all, nothing's going to just drop in your lap, okay, so, I mean, I may be wrong, <laughs> but in my opinion, nothing comes to you freely, but this breath, you know, so, appreciate that, and just do what you got to do, utilize your strengths, the things that are taken, the things that you work for, actually, you appreciate more than the things that are stolen. That's what I realized. When I when I was out there hustling and stealing, robbing, uh, I realized that it, it it left as fast as as fast as I took it. One one thing that I realized when I was out there robbing, do all that shit, is that when you're doing the wrong thing, it's real easy to find people to support you. But when you turn right. around and you try to do the right thing. People will look the other way and act as if they don't see you, and especially today with like social media. Right, it's as simple as double tapping a picture, or liking my shit, and give or dropping a comment for two seconds. You looking through Instagram all the time. You seeing all my posts. You know exactly what I'm trying to do. Right, but you still automatically like because it. you know I'm on some positive shit won't support. Right, like it's been people that I've. Offered this platform to I offered partnerships. I say hey, I got this going if you need this to help get your dreams out You know not asking for a dollar not nothing like hey, I got this space here and right. niggas is thinking like I'm trying to jump on their coattails or Essentially ride their their backs yeah. to success like no no <laughs> I have my own plan. I have my own platform. I have my own Things that I got going. Right. But I have a space that can help you. Help me. Get, get to your, your goal. Right. Right. If it's like, what's better than one billionaire? Two billion, exactly. Jay especially if you, from, if, if you, especially from, if you from Pasadena and you from the same place that I was born and grew, grew up in. Yeah. If, if I can get myself and three other niggas from Pasadena out of the situation so that our next generation can never grow up and, and see other things. Right. And I will sacrifice that. I'm not here to to try to jump on anybody or, or try to ride anybody. I'm not trying to take nobody content. I'm not trying to do nothing but give a platform and build a black conglomerate. You a, know what? A conglomerate mm -hmm. is a, a network of corporations. Absolutely. So if you're your own corporation, and I'm my own corporation, and we have 20 corporations working within our own network, then we don't have to outsource for anything. Absolutely. There's always somebody within our network that can do it. If we're doing a fashion show, we need performers. Who better I than got, us? Exactly. Right. Yeah. We need people to walk in. We need clothing lines. Who right. better than to go to that clothing line and that clothing line? Right. And I know he rap, and right. I know he's a photographer, and I know that he throws parties and promotes. Why? Everybody can basically do what they own do, and then we just build a network to keep each other moving and right. keep each other working. Help each and other grow. And that's the only thing that I'm trying to build. And, and you know what? I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand that. I don't, our people specifically, everybody else, we all know the problem. We all know the problem. But that simple solution has been so hard to to do. I guess niggas just can't be in the same room as niggas. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't feel comfortable. There is like a, we, we start, I guess Kanye West say, we just self-conscious. We just become, you know, we, oh man, look at this. This nigga, look at this nigga female. This nigga come in here, oh damn. Look at that nigga, he all talk. But we won't never say it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But we're thinking it. And just that type of energy, that type of vibe, make a person feel maybe insecure, you know? And that's our problem with each other. We got to stop looking at each other as competition. We are not in, the, we're not in competition. We don't have to compete with nobody. We are all unique in our own way. You might got a mole on your butt. That makes you very unique, nigga. You the only one in the world with a mole on your butt, nigga. Exactly. That's your mole. That. Can't no embrace that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you can't utilize it to grow or make something out of it to build, take that, run with it. There is something that every individual has that, has, that makes them unique. Very unique. It's your, it's your responsibility to find that and express it and use it 
to your benefit. One thing that I've noticed within my both sides of my family is that our generation don't like we don't hold family as any value. Right. Like right. people show up on holidays every now and then when they want to, but as far as like actually contacting and staying in touch with your siblings, with your cousins, with with your family members, actually. You have a phone now, you have social media, you have more ways to stay in contact with your family more than ever now. And people choose to just get lost in the world instead of like really realizing that family is home. Right. And you got to take care of home first, and that's take care of your family. I agree, I agree. And you know what? Economics is making that very hard for people. Economics, basic economics, because of the lack of jobs, because of... Uh, certain resources being uh, displaced is is tearing families apart. You know, mental illness is also tearing families apart. You know, speaking, speaking on that, I'm actually out right now on disability. Okay, I had an anxiety attack. Okay, so I was dealing with a lot of different situations at job. It's me starting my own business. I had problems at home with my girl. We were, I just had a lot of problems everywhere, and I just got tired of fighting. Right. So I ended up having a real bad day. Ended up getting into it at work, leaving early. I get home. I end up locked out on some felonious shit. Right. Call the maintenance people. They're out. Nobody's on. End up getting so angry. That in the past, I would just go crazy, I would punch shit, I would do shit, but this was like the first time that I can remember that I held it in and ended up having an anxiety attack. Mm. I felt like I was having a heart attack, and it was the first time that I've been dealing with anxiety my whole life and never knew what it was. Right. And two, I've been diagnosed recently, and now it's like all these times that I've been out here tripping and doing all this different shit. It was because of my mental instability, and mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. I'm thinking I'm just tripping. Right. Well, again, when it's, it's shit behind that. It's a bigger, yeah, it's a bigger story behind yeah, that. Yeah, man. Shit. My opinion about all this mental illness stuff is that's all pseudoscience. Exactly. Bro. It's all. It's not. I don't believe in all that stuff. You know. Um, honestly, pressure bust pipes. Exactly. That's just what or it is. Diamonds. Yeah, yeah, that's so exactly you what it is. Decide what you're going to do. Exactly. So it's, I'm it, not going to let nothing break me. I'm not going on no pills. I'm not right. submitting to any of the formalities. Right. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to get myself over the hump and I'm going to do what I got to do for myself. Period, point blank. And you know what? Society may not want you to talk, but I tell you the best thing to do is talking to people, talking to your homies, expressing yourself. That's the best way to relieve anxiety, relieve stress, you know what I mean? That's what I've learned because it's like a, it's like a champagne bottle, bro. Right? When you shake up a champagne bottle and you all that pressure is building in that bottle, you know, all these woes of, of the world, not being able to support your family how you want to, not being not being able to 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 just do what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it, not having a job and these are things that could uh, really make you feel pressured. And when you don't express yourself to your, to your siblings, you know, or to a friend or to, you know, and you keeping that pressure in, that's just like that bottle being shook without having the cork put. You know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. And then that's what create, you know, problems, heart problems, keeping all that pressure in creates all kind of health problems. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's best to express yourself and really let people you know see, what you're going through. But do. that's the difference because I talked about this on previous episodes. It's like okay. when you're in the streets, you talk to get out where you're mad at. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was taught by my big homie, my, my big cousin Booby, like, look, Nigga, you get down where you're mad at. You don't harbor that inform you don't harbor those feelings and come back later. You right. mad there, nigga, you get down there. You deal with your situations head on. Right. So nigga, I'm so accustomed to whenever I, I felt the way, regardless of the the repercussions behind it, nigga, do what you gotta do what you feel you gotta do, nigga. So that you don't harbor that inf that but then when you go into the corporate world, they treat you like a nigga. Right. And you know you a nigga because you're on the job, like I work construction, mm -hmm. and I will be on job sites where it'd be 500 plus workers, and I'll be the only nigga. 
Mm. One time they accused me of stealing a chainsaw. Mm. When I went to the superintendent, his response was, well, you know how it goes when they say the black guy took it. Right. And this shit made me hand this nigga up on the shit and basically almost lose my job. And I got banned from, and police showed all type of stupid shit because of just dealing with being a black man in the corporate world. It's not for us. These that is only doing this to, to appease these, these, uh, these laws. Right. They don't want us. They don't like us. They don't want to deal with us. Right. And then when I react in that way, it's just proving them right. Like, yep, that's why we don't want to deal with niggas. You see why we don't hire these niggas? Right. And a lot of that be uh, done intentionally. Um, you know what I mean? A lot of a lot of people, like I said earlier in the interview, we are an emo- we are an emotional people. You know, and mm-hmm. and people intentionally push those buttons just to get a reaction. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's important to just be aware. I know we're brought up aggressively. You know. However, that's ignorance because if our parents were smart, they would tell us to be to be humble, to be kind, you know, and to um, inform somebody of these of these things that we deal with. You know what I mean? Instead, mm-hmm. they tell us, uh, if somebody hit you, hit their ass back. Mm-hmm. But you know what that does? That gets us put in jail immediately. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. Get down where you get mad at without thinking about it gets us five to nine <laughs> or or uh, years in prison for, for assault and battery or, uh, you know, or something even worse or maybe even dead because the person who we got down got mad at they couldn't handle the ass whooping and now he went and got a gun and now look. You and, that, know? and that goes back to what you started with, dumb right. ass world. Dumb ass world, yeah. So it's important that we think before we act, you know, easier said than done. But, yeah, we are an aggressive people. You know, and in the matter of speaking, yeah, take if you are an aggressive person, make a business out of it. Go into boxing, go into karate. You got to find ways to really uh, channel those emotions and really make a business out of that because it's the time right now where we are growing. We are becoming more conscious of who we are, of our God, of what we were, and utilize that to feed your family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Should we gonna wrap it up? Man? All right, all right. I, I love the conversation. We're gonna be doing this more and more often. Well, I really we appreciate you having me, man. And and once again, continue to continue to build build on this platform. And to those watching, those listening, um, just continue just to get his brother your support. And by any means, you know, follow me at Roger Dodger that on Instagram. And um, thank you for having me, man. All right, bro. This yeah. the end. Yeah. Episode three. Politic in the podcast. I gotta run that slapper back though. <laughs>